So, who can tell me how the water in the tank is changing? Finn. It is weak drained. Drained by how much? 2.5 liters per minute. 2.5 liters per minute. Okay. What does W of T represent? So, what is the output? Raymer? Amount of water left after T minutes. Okay. That is the output. WT is the output. Let's get a little sketchy. All right. Starts with how much? So it's going to start there. And how long is it going to take to get to zero? 32 minutes. 32 minutes or so. I don't know if I'd use that same scale. I don't know if I'd do that scale again. There we go. So, again, what this is saying is we're starting with 80 liters in the tank. It's draining two and a half liters per uh, minute. We have, oh, I didn't label it though. This would be minutes or time in minutes. And this would be volume in liters left. Something like that. Okay. So I just want to make sure we're good with the general premise because now we're going to put it to work, which you can see on your notes. Problem 17.2, another look at the tank. So what are you going to do with your partner now? If you have the same function, you're going to answer some questions. We're going to put the function to work. How much water after 13 minutes? How long is it going to take to have five liters left? You're going to get uh, an inverse function and then compare the graph that you have now with the graph of the inverse function. For the inverse function graph, you can just do it right under that question, just a, a small little sketch. Just worry about intercepts. Don't get too many details on there. We'll go get her done mode with that. All right, so let's take another look at this tank with your partner. Everything you need is on your notebook sheet. Let's talk about how much water is left in the tank after 13 minutes. I'm more interested in how you got the answer, not what it is. So who can help me out? Willa. Um, I got 47.5 liters by um, doing, like, on my Okay, and what, so what'd you get? 13 minutes goes in, what comes out? 47 and a half? Okay, that's good. So how many minutes to get to five? Who can tell me what that is and how they got it? Yeah, Ashley. Um, is it 30 minutes? Well, let's write that down. Tell me how you got it. Um, I took, uh, so it takes 32 minutes to get to zero. Minutes. Oh, I like how you did it. And then 2.5 is Twice. Five, so then I subtracted two minutes. Okay. I actually really like what you did. Here's, let me show you what I did. I did this. I put five in for my output. And then I solve for our T. But here, watch, watch how it's the same thing you did. When I subtract 80, here's that divide by 2.5 thing, half of five thing you were saying. Check that out. That's a fitty. Wait, what I do here? That should be negative. That's a 75. Okay. So the two and a half fits into there, the 30 times. It actually comes from the same things you were saying. That's kind of cool. 75 divided by two and a half, 30 minutes. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the answer to this one would be, well, it takes 30 minutes, but if I want to write it in function notation, it would be W of 5 equals 30. Now, let's say I had, like, I got all these different numbers of liters. Do I want to be doing this over and over, like these two steps of algebra over and over? Let's say I had to do five of these. How many steps, how many steps of algebra would I have to do if I do five of these? Five, ten. Ten. But if I get the inverse, if I did five of them, I would only have to do two, just the one time. So that's what we're going to work on now. So in this situation, what can we gain from the inverse? Well, what did we get from the inverse here, time or liters? Time. Get time when knowing leaders. Right? That's really good. Because if we have two variables, sometimes we want leaders. Sometimes we want time, maybe. So let's work on getting the inverse. I'm actually going to make some, got to make some room on the bottom here. Because I'm going to do the algebraic, the algebraic method here. So our, our original function is W of T equals 80 minus 2.5. And remember, big idea to get inverse function, we switch independent and dependent variables. So instead of W of T alone, I need T alone. So just like I did up here, 
it's going to be the same process. I'm going to subtract 80 from both sides. So that means W of T minus 80 equals negative 2.5T. Divide both sides by negative 2 and a half. So if I want to know the time, I put in the liters, subtract 80, divide it by negative 2.5. It'll always give me the time. Now, there's some things you could do here. Like this is the same as um, negative 0.4T plus... What's A divided by two and a half? I think it's 32. Yeah. 64 plus 30. Okay. Oh, I just put T instead of W of T. I, I put the wrong variable in. Thanks for asking, Micah. It's not 0.4 T. It's 0.4 of W of T. Yeah. So um, I did. So um, in this situation, would um, I did W equals eighty minus two point five T? Would W be the wrong variable to use in this situation? No, you could use it. I just kept mine in uh, function notation. Okay, because I'm just I'm just asking because I did. So I subtracted two point five, or I added two point five T. Um, okay. And then I then subtracted eighty. No, and then I divided, or and then I subtracted W to so get eighty minus W. Oh, so your negatives are you just got a negative positive positive instead of a positive negative negative. You got the same values; they're all just switched. Okay, Cause, but then I'm confused because I did how many minutes does it take until the tank is five liters of water? So I put in five for W, but then I um. When I did five. If you put five in for a W, you need to get thirty minutes because look at. On mine, if I put 5 in, I have to do 5 minus 80. Check out what I did. Where am I at? Five, negative 75, 5 minus 80, right? Then divided by negative 2.5. Divide by negative 2.5. So just make, sure, just make sure it checks out. But we could have some differences with people doing the division here. Uh, the negatives could all be opposite and still be true. All right? So that's good. Here's how the different graphs would look. It switches our intercepts. Dependent becomes independent. Independent becomes dependent. All right? That's it. We're going to look at one more. Last question for the unit, guys. Get hyped. We're talking again about cellular telephones. Um, you guys have already seen this. Remember we looked at the homes uh, that had uh, no, self or no home landlines anymore, cell phone only? Do you guys remember looking at that data? So this is the same data. Um, we're looking at a relatively linear function here. It's your job to draw a line of best fit and come up with a linear equation to get started. Now, just to help you out, to come up with the, the linear equation for the line of best fit, if y equals mx plus b, what are the only two things we need to make a line? Y intercept. Y intercept, yep. Yeah. And slope. Slope. Okay, so draw your line, get a y-intercept and slope. Now, when I go over it, I might have one that's a tad different than yours, and then we'll just use mine, but you still need to practice getting that slope and y-intercept from a graph. So we all know that finding this line the best thi fit thing is not an exact science, right? There's a line that's close. What Your equation would just, you'd want it to be close to mine. Once I write mine down, though, we're all going to write down so we can all do the same thing moving forward. So for my equation... I got a slope. I was looking at like a lot of these, and I was like, this one up like two point something, this one up like three ish, this one up with like close to this one up four. So I was looking at those, and I came up with a slope of three and a half. That's what I chose. And I'm going to do function notation, so P of T. So the slope's just close to this. Okay. And then my y-intercept, it was given right here. But with my line of best fit, I came in a little under it. So I used three and a half for my, for my y-intercept on my line of best fit. And it's kind of cool that it's three and a half for each. I kind of just like that. So even if you didn't get exactly this, we should be uh, in the same ballpark. Moving forward, we're all going to use this one, though. Okay, so we can all have the same thing with the next. So you're going to notice your, the thing I printed out. I printed out all the graphs and stuff. I didn't 
decide to print another sheet of paper for everybody. So you can either choose to fit everything that we're about to do on there or in your math notebook, okay? Um, so we've got our function. What we're going to do with this function is answer questions uh, two, three, oops, two, three, and four with it. I'm going to put your function back up here for you. I'll put it in the bottom right. So you're going to input six, see what we get. You want to output a 30, see what we get. And then come up with a way that's going to be nicer if we know the percentage. All right? You'll see, you'll see why since we're in the inverse function unit here, or lesson here. All right, with your partner, two, three, and four. So P of six, let's get that going. P of six means what? Six what? No, what does the P of six part mean though? Six what? <laughs> Some of us are still on the tank. Six years after 2004, right? Okay, yeah. I'm, I was thinking about the tank a little bit still. And that means I get 3.5 times 6 plus 3.5. That means after six years after 2004 or 2010, 24.5 houses were cell phone only. That's what this means, okay? You should have written that down, but I'm just going to say it. Yeah, that means no landlines in 2010. That makes sense. 12 years ago. Okay. And that keeps increasing as more and more people have cell phones, right? 13 years ago. Okay. So now P of T equals 30. What is that telling us? We don't know the time. 30% of people. Yeah, we don't know the time when there's 30%. So 30% happens when 3.5 times T plus 3.5. So if I want to get T alone, subtract three and a half. 3.5T is 26 and a half. I almost used my calculator, guys. I didn't need it for that. So 26 and a half divided by three and a half is about 7.6. So that means about 7.6 years after 2004, roughly 30% of homes are cell phone only. Now, how many steps did I have to do to get that? Two. Two. So if I want to find a bunch of years with percentages, do I want to do two steps, two steps, two steps? We want to write an inverse function, so we just do two steps once. Okay, so that's what this is going to look like. We've got, oh, I'm going to go rewrite it. P of T equals 3.5T plus 3.5. So instead of having time go in, I want percentage to go in, which means I need to solve for T. How do I get rid of this plus 3.5? Minus 3.5. Minus 3.5. So that means P of T minus 3.5 equals 3.5T. How do I get rid of times 3.5? Divide by 3.5. And I'll rewrite it all nice. The time of years after 2004 that I get certain percentages would be the percentage minus 3.5 divided by 3.5. So if I know a percentage, I better be slapping that one in there. If I don't know the percentage, I better be slapping time in there. Each function gives me the different variable easier. Could we do this over and over and over to get the answer right here? Could you? Yes. Yeah, you could. It just wouldn't be super efficient if we had to do several. So that's why we want the inverse function. Have you guys noticed as we go on, some math deals with efficiency, like there's a better way to do it once you know more things? That's, yeah, that's cool. More tools in the tool belt is how I like to think of it. Lesson summary.